Alright, we are Creation Flame once again. We have the life track here. It's had uh, a bit of work done to it now. Cover some uh, of our experience thus far. As you can see, it's partially a chicken tractor. The birds love hanging out on it. So, the new quick attach wheels are working good so far. Haven't noticed any issues. Um, we did have our tracks too loose, so we've tightened those up significantly. We did this by removing probably at least eight links or so, deflating the tires, putting it back on. Um, we used to come along to tighten it up and then put the uh, master links back in. So now you can see that they are quite tight. So you can actually grab them. It's got a couple inches of play. Um, right now we're doing some work with the power cubes. Had some uh, wiring issues. We were having a problem with the bottom one where it would just die under any kind of load. Um, and then the top one ran fairly well, but we were losing battery power too. So after a while it's just getting hard to keep them running uh, or jumping them off of each other. We've replaced both batteries with brand new batteries. Uh, the other ones are apparently both bad now. Um, and then I have Aaron here, who is a local Austinite. Uh, he stays out on a, a similar property of Dewar's. Um, and he's pretty much a, a motor mechanical genius kind of guy. So he's been out here helping, troubleshooting, solving, fixing, etc. What he's done initially here is rewire the ignition system um, to what you see now on both. We believe this will probably solve the problem we were having with um, power loss. Would you like to kind of cover what you've done and why and what you've seen? Uh, it was hard for me to determine exactly what the last person had going. Um, I knew that they had some problems with some, some burning wires and this engine wouldn't turn off. And, and uh, essentially what I did, or what the initial problem was, the cooling fan and the fuel solenoid and the charge wire off the regulator were all tied together. So when you shut off the ignition, the, the cooling fan kept the fuel solenoid energized and it kept running and it kept charging. So that was basically what that problem there was. Uh, we have a little bit bigger fan on the bottom. It's from a Ford. And we have a little bit smaller one on the top. And as it is, uh, we're maintaining above 12 volts on the top. It's about 12.5, fully uh, revved up to full operating RPM. And the bottom one is about 12.3. So, and that number fluctuates when you go from idle to full speed. So, it, it's probably just adequate to keep keep this unit going just as it is, but any add-ons going to require more power. How much power are the fans pulling? Comparative, like you say, it's tr the bottom one's pulling or putting out 12.3. What is the fan using? Um, I'm not sure what the amp output on our regulator is, um, but probably the output of the the regulator is is an amp wise is probably real close to the amp draw of the fan. Um, and is that the same case for both? Yeah. So pretty much the same case. This one's a little better since it's smaller. It doesn't pull as much power as a lower fan. Um, yeah. So down here on the bottom one, like the original wires were all tied together. Like you said, the fan and... Yeah, and uh, what a, another feature here, what I've done is, uh, like, let's just unplug the starter right quick. So key on, the fan runs, and then when you go to start it, 
it isolates the fan, the fan kicks off, so we're going to get more power to crank it over while you're cranking it. And as soon as you let go, the fan comes back on. dies within a few seconds so it's just running out of fuel we need a new kind of switch to be able to ground the ignition to shut these off instantly and the switch doesn't have those type of functions because it'll that's what the shorting problem was I believe with the killing the batteries so those batteries are shorted and they won't take a charge anymore so we'll continue to run this monitor battery life and see if they stay above 12 volts we'll be good cool Aaron has also gone through and continued my initial zip, job, zip tie work of securing the cables to clean them up. Uh, trying to make this a little bit more organized. And has also trimmed off the excess metal from the old cross member. Um, it was initially kind of clear when I put it in, but apparently. We have a little bit of pivoting with the uh, the bucket here sliding back and forth, or at least these pins are a little too big. I need to make some new ones, but it was causing it to collide right there. So we have since removed that metal. That will be no longer an issue. Um, other than that, I think everything is good here, and we'll update with more information later.